Jay Powell talking about diversity at the Fed. Very important, he says to him. Uh, Jonathan, uh, as we speak, we're up nearly 3% again on the Dow now, approaching up 680. We've just edged back a little bit. And you're talking about gold, which to me is such a safe haven play, which is interesting because gold has not really seen many gains despite all the volatility, but it is now. My question to you is how do you play gold? Do you, do you buy physical gold or, or an ETF? How do you play it? Well, I mean, you, 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 what you wanted to play, Stuart, uh, excuse me, Stuart, That's okay. Ashley, and Earl, are we on BBC or are we on FN? <laughs> I'm not sure exactly. Uh, you you want to play for you want to play for the long moves. You want to pay for those long moves. I mean, look at the gold bull run in the early 2000s. It went up basically every year for a decade. So when you're buying any investment, including gold, I think you want to play not for a three percent, five percent pop, but for a 30, 40, 50 percent pop. There's a number of ways to do it. GLD is an ETF, an exchange traded fund that tracks the price of gold. There's also innumerable gold stocks as well. And like the old saying goes, Ashley. A rising tide lifts all boats, right. just as all the FANG stocks were lifted in that bull market. If this is a bull market in gold, you'll see all those names do well as well. Is there anything else other than gold, though, Jonathan, where you're tempted to take a nibble at right now? Well, I'm, I'm also looking at kind of goes along, uh, Ashley, with names that are correlated with a weaker dollar. <sighs> you know, this was a big in, this was a big investment theme mm. throughout most of the, the two, early 2000s. The dollar going down, the price of foreign assets going up. So, again, once again, there's innumerable ETFs, exchange traded funds that benefit when the value of the dollar goes down. I know it doesn't exactly go with the president's buy American, hire American ethos, but the point is to make money. And if this is a trend, a weakening dollar that people can profit from, I think it's one versus thing. Inve worth investigating, and UDN is one ETF to check out in that regard. UDN. And I guess, um, you know, uh, uh, and another issue uh, uh, that I think uh, the, the investors would like to get from you, Jonathan, is, is this volatility, the ups and downs, up 500, down 700, down 1,000, up 500, is that something we're going to have to get used to uh, in 2019? Uh, yes. I mean, there's, there's two ways to look at it, actually. In many ways, this is a return to more, truly more normalized volatility. We, we had a number of years there of really low volatility in a, in a very strong stock market. So in many ways, this is just a return to normal. I do think, however, and we heard Chairman Powell just a few minutes ago mm. here on FBN talking about he wouldn't resign if the president asked, asked me. I do happen to think that a lot of what's going on from government here, tweets and, and you know, resignation proposals, etc., I do think as we started talking about. That doesn't in impact investors because what's happening in Washington does impact what's happening in Wall Street. So the more I think that we can get government out of the financial markets, the more calm they'll be in 2019. Well, we have a real divided government. Is that good for the markets? They're not doing anything. Yeah, well, let's hope that, you know, one of the issues, I think, is spending. We didn't hear quite too much about it in 2018, uh, uh, Ashley. I think we will hear about it in 2019. So if that can be an economic decision, you know, we're talking a lot about $5 billion for the wall, but not about the trillions and trillions of dollars of national debt. Once again, this was a big issue. It's affecting the market, affecting the value of the dollar, our currency, and, and the interest rates as well. So if a divided government means perhaps reining in some of this government spending... Might no, not be a bad thing. No, not a bad thing either. And you're confident that we can get something done with China. And if we can, that cloud goes away. And then maybe we're a little more bullish on the markets. Yeah, I mean, certainly, uh, uh, query CEOs in 2018, and many, many of them, actually, as you know, talked about the, the trade tensions with China. Forget even the tariffs. We know that that's costing consumers billions and billions of dollars. The trade tensions with China impacting their bottom line. We heard from Apple, obviously, yesterday, uh, many of the car makers in 2018. So any resolution to this impasse, I think, without question, would be a benefit for the market and for every American. You mentioned Apple, Jonathan. It's interesting. Is there a price? We've had some... Uh... Uh, traders say, hey, it gets down to 120, I'm in. Others are nibbling at it at around 144. <laughs> Do you have any comments on Apple? Yes. Yeah, of course. You'd rather <laughs> buy it at 200. <laughs> You'd rather buy it. You'd rather buy it higher. Right. This is a very foreign concept for Peter, you know, but the idea that markets move in trend, you don't want to bargain when it comes to stocks. Again, that sounds kind of anathema to a lot of people, yeah. but in my mind, actually, you'd rather buy it at 200 for the move to three or 400 rather than buying to try to get a bargain because you very well might end up like, for example, what happened with Microsoft. People were buying it all the way down in 2000s. They got a bargain, but they waited a decade for that stock to recover. I don't want to get too wonky, but one of the things that uh, people 
people have been saying about these markets. Look at the Treasuries, the fact that the seven-year Treasury yield is under the one-year Treasury yield, and all of that's out of sync, and that suggests a recession. I don't know whether that's true, but that's what the wonky ones are telling us. Uh, any thoughts on that, Jonathan? Well, there's been, I mean, a, a lot of uh, Americans have been talking about higher interest rates, right. but there's been a massive rally, as you know, actually, a rally in, in Treasury prices, meaning that interest rates have come down quite uh, precipitously. And as you said, inversions, oftentimes we've seen in the last couple of weeks, short-term rates being higher than long-term right. rates. Look, historically, this does tend to precede a recession, not to mention the terrible stock market in 2018. Mm. So, you know, it's another example of where price might be preceding the fundamental data that's yet to come. All right, Jonathan, thank you so much. You, you, you've done a sterling job this morning of walking us through many issues. Uh,